Hi, Luke Fannin here from Athlone Business Faculty in AIT. And I'm going to talk about audit reports and audit opinions. And this question comes up for our third year accountants in their auditing exam nearly every year because it's a very important issue. So before we get into looking at past questions, I'm just going to glance or look at a, an audit report from Glambia PLC. So here we have Glambia Annual Report and Financial Statements for 2018. Here is the <clears throat> a list of pages and it's quite long. You can see there's 217 pages in it. Now the auditor isn't expected to audit all of this. The auditor's responsibility, and we'll see this in the audit report, it's stated, is just to audit, audit the group the financial statement section. So from page 118 to 127, 10 pages there roughly. And also, so the audit's responsibility is to audit these and then give their opinion as to if the accounts are true and fair or if the financial statements are th true and fair. The other pages, all of these pages, is called the other information. Now it's a bit confusing, this is called other information here, but really the other information is everything, it's the strategic report, the director's report, and anything else, anything outside of the financial statements. And the auditors are expected to, to read this just to make sure that it's not inconsistent with what's in the financial statements. And we'll see that. So let's jump to the auditor's report. And this is an example of a non-modified audit report. And it's the most common type of report you'll see, especially for a PLC, because a large company like a public limited company will have the resources to have uh, professional accountants employed, and they should be able to produce the financial statements to a high degree of accuracy. And they should be, you know, materially correct. So for the most part, we see unmodified audit reports for public limited companies. And then when uh, there are issues, sometimes we, we'll, we'll talk about them separate. Okay, so here, in our opinion, the group, the financial statements give a true and fair view of the assets, liabilities. That's the main, that's the opinion there. So in our opinion, the financial statements give a true and fair view. That's, and there's no qualification there. They're not saying, but there's a certain area that isn't, or there, it's, that's an example of a non-modified opinion. Below that, it tells us these are the financial statements, the income statement, balance sheet, and notes, and then the others. And then it gives the basis for opinion, saying that they did it in accordance with uh, the auditing standards and that they're independent of the group and we're uh, bound by ethical standards. And also, it's important, we believe the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. So if for some reason the, auditor, the auditor's work was limited in some manner, where they were unable to gain enough evidence about a certain manner, then they'd have to say that here. And it, it, if it was deemed material, uh, or material and pervasive, then it would be a modified audit report. But we look at that separately. All audit reports now have to list key audit matters. So here they are. And the key audit matters are just the most significant matters that the auditors came across in their audit. The areas in the financial accounts or financial statements that the auditors had to devote most time towards. So if we see them here, acquisition accounting and intangible assets on acquisition, so a troublesome area, high risk of misstatement, provisions for uncertain tax provisions, positions. So obviously with those, it's uh, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of uh, estimation and subjectivity in trying to value the provisions, goodwill and other intangible assets, how long do you write them off over, how many years, and then revenue recognition. So they're the areas that the auditors said they spent most, the key audit matters, the most significant matters, and 
we're not going to look at it, but then they go into each of these and say how they do, how they devoted their time or how they dealt with the risks. And a key audit matter, they're not saying anything is wrong with the accounting. They're just saying these are the most important matters and this is how we audited, audited them. So uh, everything is okay. The auditors believe that they have been accounted for correctly. Materiality is always listed in the audit report and 13.1 million, which was determined on the basis of profit before tax. And normally for most companies, materiality is based on, as a percentage of profit before tax. And then for the company, determined on the basis of net assets. So depending on a, the type of company or industry, auditors use other criteria for materiality, such as revenue, net assets, maybe liabilities, depending on if they're in a revenue generating stage or not. They give more detail on materiality here. So the 13.1 million, approximately 5% of profit before tax and 1% of equity. So, and that's quite normal. 5% of PBT or profit before tax is normal, is, is quite common as the materiality level that's taken. So, so what they're saying is something's material if it will affect the economic decisions of a person relying on the financial statements. So what they're saying is any error below 5% is immaterial. It shouldn't affect the decisions. Any errors above 13.1 million in the financial statements will affect financial decisions and therefore the auditor needs to report about them. So any errors that are there or any possible errors need to be reported on greater than 13.1 million. In addition down here, also in, so that's quantitative materiality which is based on a percentage of, of, of a figure. Qualitative materiality is certain items are material even if they're less than the 5% limit. Example would be anything to do with director's remuneration. It was very, very important that it was calculated correctly in the, in the income statement and also disclosed correctly in the notes to the accounts or any type of related party transactions. So they're examples of, of issues which would, even if they were below the 5% limit, would be qualitatively material and may then mean that the auditor would have to issue a modified opinion if there was any problem in relation to them. So the audit report, it uh, talks about scope of the audit. The other information is here. So the directors are responsible. It's the, it is the other information other than the financial statements. And our opinion on the financial statements does not cover other information. And we are required to determine if there is material statement of financial statements. That's fine. But our responsibility is to read the under, other information and consider if the other information is materially inconsistent with the financial statements. And we have what they say here, we have nothing to report in this regard. So what they're saying there is that the other information, the director's report, the strategic report, the KPIs, is consistent with the, with the financial statements. It gives responsibilities of directors. The directors are responsible for the preparation of the financial statements. They're also responsible for assessing the ability to continue as a going concern. and using the going concern basis unless they intend to liquidate the company. The auditor's responsibilities. Okay, reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free from material misstatement and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. So it tells 
the response gives the responsibilities here identify risks of material misstatement understanding of internal controls accounting policies and going concern is an important area so conclude of the appropriateness of the director's use of the going concern basis so most companies will be going concern unless the directors intend to liquidate them in the next 12 months and the auditors have to consider whether a material uncertainty exists relating to going concern and material uncertainty just means there could be a a cash flow issue in the next year, the repayment of loans that may need to be disclosed by the directors in the notes. And uh, the, so it doesn't mean they're not a going concern. It just means that they're a going concern, but there is an issue that an important issue that needs to be managed by the company. And if we, the auditors conclude a material uncertainty exists, we are required to draw attention in the report to the related disclosures in the financial statements. So, so if there is a material uncertainty, the director's responsibility is to make a disclosure in the notes to the accounts. The auditor's responsibility then in relation to that material uncertainty is to, if the disclosures are inadequate or if the disclosure wasn't made, is to modify our opinion. And there the other, and there's one more page, I think, left in the audit report. So it mentions ethical requirements, and uh, which is a, a separate area about threats to independence, self-review, self-interest, familiarity. Other Aries at the bottom, the kind of corporate governance statement and other matters which are required to address. address. So the, the deal with some of the ethical things here, non-audit services that are prohibited or not provided and we remain independent. And here they give the total interrupted engagement so that so it could be because familiarity is such an important issue in and that it can become a threat to independence. They're saying the period of engagement is three years, which is quite short. And then it's signed by an individual previous in prior years or in years, number of years ago, it was the auditors could sign it just Deloitte. But now in recent years, it has to be signed by the, the partner in charge of the audit, the engagement partner. And that's the audit report. And it's useful to have looked at one and that's why we just run through it there. So thanks for watching. The, ne the rest of the videos will be more specific in, in answering questions in relation to audit reports. And you'll find them, you know, they should be linked into this video.